What does IKEA and software development have in common? Well, I've assembled my fair share of IKEA furniture in my time. And uh, one thing I always find is that no matter how closely you follow the instructions and how well you prepare things beforehand, there's always one thing that you'll put on backwards. That will mean that you have to undo a whole swathe of stuff and rebuild it all again. And there seems very little you can do about it. And software development is a little bit like that. No matter how well you prepare, how well you plan ahead, there's always stuff that happens, always uncertainty, always things that you didn't know or didn't realize or get wrong or misunderstood and that will trip you up. And all we can do really to manage that is to factor in that knowledge, that certainty that there will be uncertainty ahead of time and not make the assumption that everything will go according to plan. And the way we do that, if we're using techniques like BDD, TDD, Agile techniques in general, is we have conversations initially to try and uncover as many of those assumptions as we possibly can initially so that we can get a bulk, most of them out of the way. And then for those that, that, that remain, that will crop up, we have a set of acceptance criteria and executable specifications that we define that give us our framework and our safety net so that when we do change things, when you do realize that things are wrong, we can do, we can say, ah, oh, yes, that assumption was actually incorrect. We need to change this here and change our assumptions and express our new requirements this way and then move ahead. And so we have that framework where we can get clarity on what we know, what we don't know, and then refactor what we don't know in terms of execu our executable specifications. That is a bit tricky to explain when you haven't done it, but when you do work this way, it is really very, very effective.